Hi, everyone. We have a cool special guest. Yes, Who's here, do. Beth? Robert Creighton of Cagney. I love him. I've loved him ever since I saw him in Bunny Girl at Pickman Playhouse. Oh, that's so good. Leslie I saw that. I was with that you. That girl that gave me a lap dance at Robert Bridegroom. <laughs> Uh, hi, thank you. Yeah, we're tired today. Hi, everybody. Amazing. Happy Monday. It's Monday. It is. It is Monday. It is. A, a new, and, oh, we, so we had, hi, Henry. How you doing? So we had a uh, big news to this morning, right? A new Hamilton cast member. Yes. Uh, Jonathan Groff is leaving to go to his Netflix series and Tony nominee, Rory O'Malley. Yes. So Rory, you know, Rory obviously had a, he, he's had a probably interesting few weeks. Right. Because, because he, he was supposed to be, headline. who was he in nerds? Jobs or Gates? Am I supposed to know? That? Jobs, I Gates, know. Jobs, Jobs. Anyway, he was a nerd. Gates. And then, uh, yeah, I'm sad about nerds too. But um, I, you know, Gates. they Thank literally you. were in the middle of a rehearsal and they found out it was over. And he was Gates. Thank you. And um, I actually watched Steve Jobs yesterday, so I was in oh, the movie. Prepared. The movie. So I've been. See, I told you it was crooked. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Now we are even. Uh, are so we? Um, yeah, Renee is on vacation at Hamilton. So Rory O'Malley starts when? April 11th. That's like very soon. super soon. So I guess Groff, you know, he got that new TV show and he had to get out of there. Now, this is interesting because, yes, Cagney is a brilliant idea. We're going to get to that. It's a musical. It's a musical. Robert Crane. We're, we're not getting to that. Yet. We're going to get to him. April. He's going to own the second half of this show. Yeah. Um, so, yes, on your birthday, Muzak, April you have 11. really good eyesight. Um, I do. Uh, terrible hearing, great eyesight. Uh, Roy O'Malley is starting. So it's super quick. Right, Groff is leaving on April 9th. Yeah, but it's inter what I was saying is it's interesting because it's like a month before Tony nominations, and you know, right. Jonathan Groff is obviously a, a front runner for the featured category, but that's always interesting that's when you're not in a show when all that's happening. Anyway, yeah. uh, so that's cool. Yeah, there's some more news. Barbara Cook has called off her off-Broadway show. Well, she then, delayed uh, it. She delayed it, I should say delayed right. it, yeah. She postponed uh, it. Yeah, so this is, this, I, I get, they just said it's not ready. You know, I mean, she has a book coming out, uh, it's called Then and Now, the show and the book both have the same title. And I, they just said, you know, they had a rehearsal yesterday and they were like, we're not ready, let's delay it. So, you know. Hopefully it'll happen. Sometimes you have to delay things, right? So uh, I hope that, I hope we get to see it. I hope it all comes together soon. Yeah. There's a lot of other stuff. There's a lot of other sort of interesting stuff. There was some, some love news. Love news. Oh, love news. yes. Engagements and marriages. And so Mark Shaman got married. You yes. know Mark Shaman. He wrote the music to uh, Hairspray, Catch Me If You Can. Charlie the Chocolate Factory. Yes, that's right. And a lot of movies, like, and like 900 movies. 900. He scored a lot of movies. That's right. Uh, hi, Here France. Lieutenant Commander Louis Mirabal. Yeah, I know. That's his husband. Military dude. Yeah. And, and I guess it was like a surprise thing that happened at the end of his retirement that's right. ceremony, right? Yes. Which is kind of cool. I love a surprise wedding. And, uh, uh, um, and Kate, Kate Rinders. Kate who I interviewed recently on Show People is engaged to Andrew, Andrew Szymanski. You talked about him on Show People. Yeah, I did. Uh, so yeah, man. so that just happened. They just put a photo up so of a everybody ring. should have a movie. So congratulations, yeah. Kate and Andrew. Best wishes to the happy couple. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh, Waitress started on Friday, I think. And is doing really great She's doing at great. the box office. Yep, already doing great. Yeah, I loved Andrew and Hunchback, too. Lou Castro. Spring is for lovers, Margaret said. Thanks See that? Margaret. Engagements and yay, waitress. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's happening. Waitress is mm -hmm. now a performance. You can go see it. Right, Head of Passes, which is that Terrell Alvin McPreamy play at The Public starring Felicia Rashad. That extended a week. We love Felicia Rashad. We love Tony Winter Felicia Rashad. Where's Condola Rashad? I'm ready for her to come back. I'm sure she's working hard somewhere. Uh, Adina, what's Adina up to? Adina news. Is there Adina news? Adina was at the Easter egg roll yesterday at the White House. Oh, right. As you do. As you do. <laughs> I guess. And uh, she's teaming up with the Lopez's. Do I even need to say their first names? For a frozen sing along at stage 48 on April 17th. So I'll see you there. And she went to see Hamilton. And she went to see right? Hamilton yesterday. I guess she's on the East Coast. She did an East Coast she, tour. She did a swing up and down <laughs> the East Coast. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh. Is going to this is the highbrow. This is the highbrow part a, of the show. She's going to make a cameo in the Merchant of Venice in Venice, Italy, in July. She's going to preside over Shylock's trial. Okay. Somebody I mean, wants to know if there's any cats casting, Beth. More importantly, no. The, nobody cares about the notorious <laughs> RBG. Um, RBG. Uh, cats casting. I don't know about cats. Cats. Right. They got to find cats. They got to find cats. Do you know anything new with Leah Michelle? She was in town too. Uh, Celebrating she had brunch. Birthday. It's she Jonathan's had, birthday. She had brunch with Jonathan Groff on his birthday and probably gave him some career advice about leaving your 29 <laughs> Probably nominated. slept over. You know, and when they yes. went to brunch with, with who did they go to brunch Leah with? With Arrivo. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and Oak, Oak Smash. Oak from Oak. Hamilton. Yes. Yeah, it was oh, like a, a fun little uh, foursome. They put that photo up. Yeah, they did. Uh, and Harriet Harris is doing a new Jody Pietro play at La Jolla. In yeah. Bay. What else? What else? What else? You, you interviewed Paul Alexander. Oh, Nolan. Paul Alexander Nolan. That's a fun interview. Uh, and he showed me his big muscular arms for no reason. That was. It was so funny. You know, when you do interviews, it's funny to see how people dress. Right? Yeah, he wore like a white and t-shirt. And I tend to just wear, I tend to wear like a tie, and today's Live at Five guest is dressed impeccably, by the way. Oh, but God. I tend to wear like a tie and a jacket just because it lo- I look better that way. And I tend to wear a black sweater. <laughs> but that's what Paul I showed up in like a t-shirt, which is cool, because you know, he was like the cool actor, and I was like the reporter guy. What is all this? I don't know. Okay, Whatever. He's funny. Okay, I get nice a kick out of him. They're, they're nice arms. arms. You can watch the video on Broadway.com. He has yes. huge arms. Uh, I did jazz hands, yes. I did. Also, all of the people that voted on culturalists have come up with a funny girl they want to come to Broadway. Yeah. And it's Tina Fey. Obvious. We could have guessed that. We could have guessed that. How is Shuffle Long going? Well, they're back in rehearsal, I think. They're taking this week off and they're rehearsing, which was something they were always planning on doing. Um, and then they come back and they still have like three weeks of previews, I think. And then I they just want to see it over It's a new show. So, you know, they're, it's like taking a pile of clay and making a castle. It's actually a revival, but yeah. <laughs> But right. whatever, whatever it's, you say. It's okay, beautiful. fine. So I'm going to get out of here now. Please. Because uh, somebody who's super talented is going to take my seat. You want to introduce him and I'll do the thing? Bobby Creighton. Come on down. Come on down. Come, down. Come over here. Come on down. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, really there's a, I got an applause thing. You got an applause thing. Hello, <laughs> my darling. Should I show my arms now yes, or later? Yes, no. You can just <laughs> do it right off the bat. Let's just show you the arms. Can I comment on some of the news? Yes. Because Kate Reinders and Andrew Samonski are both friends of mine. Yeah. Didn't know, I mean, they didn't sort know of they were just engaged, like surprised but, us all um, with a picture. The other night, media. I was staying. I stayed. You know, I have two little kids, and yeah. the show I'm doing Cagney is very demanding. So I stayed in the city at a hotel, and I was stopping in Dwayne Reed to get like provisions for my hotel room. Mm-hmm. And Kate Reinders bumped into her, oh and I, oh, I just love her. And we got talking about what you should eat after the show, <laughs> what doesn't affect your voice, you know, among other friendly things. But um, what should you and now eat she's after engaged. The show? That was like less than a week ago, so I'm so oh, excited that's for her. Awesome, she's the best. She's so funny and so sweet. Oh, but she's we're the here best. to talk about you. Ah. Okay, let's talk about Cagney. This is an amazing show, you guys. It's a good show. I'm not gonna lie. This to you. is a triple threat. There's a triple threat who happens to look a lot like James Cagney. When did you True, I don't normally that? have red hair. No, I noticed that. Um, I noticed that. Yeah, a little it's, redder uh, than usual. A little redder. And it wasn't this red. The producer said, I want it redder. Well, people want to know your show. It's Cagney. It's at the West Side Theater. It's about upstairs. the... Um, oh, James. It's called Cagney. It's about the life of James Cagney, who... So um, for the youngsters... Yeah. Who, ...who don't watch old movies like I do, uh-huh. uh, James Cagney. He's mostly known as a gangster. That's right. I think of Public Enemy. I think of the grapefruit scene. That's exactly. What I think of. That's what made him faint. You know, that's what started his. He smashed a grapefruit into, into May, Clark, May Clark's face. May Clark's face. Oh I know a little bit. A I little love bit. This. Like this much. Um, so he was kind of a tough guy. But he was. In fact, the tagline of our show is the tough guy in tap shoes. That's the part that people might not know that he was a song and dance man as well. Yep. He started. He, someone's saying, I think of George M. He won. Right. He won, he won his. Tony. Oscar, Oscar for um, playing George M. Cohan in Yankee Doodle Dandy, of course, right, of course. One of the best movies ever. And uh, Someone says you look like a gangster. I think it's the hair. Yeah? Don't get me started. Ooh. Come over here and say that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> oh it is the hair. I can't go anywhere without my hair. Like, it, like I literally get up and I look in the mirror and it goes, it goes like this without me even doing anything. Wow. Um, but he started in vaudeville, grew up in New York. He was a New York guy, which is why I'm so excited to do this story. But you're not a New York guy. You're a Canadian guy. I'm a Canadian guy, although... They walk among us people. Three, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of us on the Broadway. There are. Uh, I became a citizen a year ago, though. Three oh, days wow. ago. I've been a citizen for a year. And I did all that. Yep. Yeah. I'm now both. You're both. I'm Canadian. Proud to be Canadian. Proud to be a New Yorker and now an American. So someone wants to know your favorite... Well, you also created this show. Did this was a dream that started, like over twenty years ago in acting school, and it has become my pa- it became my passion to sort of create the show, and then I started collaborating with people who knew how to do that. Kind what of was thing. where <laughs> when, when did you fall in love with this era and 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 Cagney? Long before the Cagney idea, I wanted to be Fred Astaire growing up, but um, That's good. I'm not. Uh, Fred Astaire. <laughs> it doesn't. It I'm not the type. <laughs> I stopped growing. But you look a lot like Cagney. I do, I guess. Yeah, people seem to think that. I, I mean, I, I... Did you... How did it become Cagney? How did you get to that point? So an, a teacher in acting school said, you remind me of Jimmy Cagney, and I started watching his films, and I literally became obsessed with watching him on camera, 
And then I started reading about who he was as a person and became kind of obsessed with his life and starting from nothing. And, you know, he's kind of a guy guy. Oh, yeah. Tough boxer, da da da. And I loved sports when I was, I loved sports just as much as performing. Those were my two dreams be a hockey player, which was never going to happen, or be on Broadway. <laughs> it's a Canadian, exactly. I had two, my parents were really happy about my dreams. Great, <laughs> solid career choices. Um, so if someone wants to but, know what your um, your favorite Cagney anecdote is, uh, you must have done so much research. I've done a ton of research. Some of my favorite anecdotes have come from people, uh, older people have come to see the show and then want to tell me about personal experiences with Cagney. When we were in Florida, um, premiering the show, we had a Q and A, and at the end, this older gentleman got up and he said, "I want to tell you, I was in the Second World War, and we were." Um, I forget where he was stationed, but Cagney came to do a show at their base. And after the the show got rained out, so they couldn't do the show, but he went around all night through the rain to every barracks and shook every soldier on the base's hand to thank them for their service. And that's what he did all night through the rain, never did the show, but stuck around to go and shake every soldier's hand. The guy, it was not a draw, the guy told the story, we were all crying, he was crying. And yeah, I he was a tough like guy, but he wasn't really. He was an artist, yeah. he quit. Uh, in almost his prime, like he wasn't that old. He was sixty, early sixties. He had, he made a movie called One Two Three, mm -hmm. and he was in this um, soundstage in Germany in the dark. Came outside, and he's like, "I want to be back on my farm." And he literally quit, went back to his farm in upstate wow. New York for twenty years, raised horses and painted. I one of my big dreams right now is to own a Cagney painting. So if there's anyone out there who knows how I can get my hands on a yeah, Cagney painting, that's on wow. my bucket list. Well, you're tapping your feet off in this show. It is a workout. I mean... There's six of us in the cast, and everyone... Bruce Sabbath, who plays Warner, sort of Cagney's royal, doesn't have to dance. Um, although he probably could. But he doesn't have to. He's not required to, but the others, Jeremy Benton, Josh Walden, Ellen Zalesi, and Danette Holden, are all phenomenal tap dancers. And we... Everyone is a triple threat in this show, because there's no... You have to be. You, you have to be able to really sing, really act, and really dance. There's no hiding. So it's, it's it's fun. This it really is. I'm fully in the dream come true land right now. People want to know what surprised you most when you were researching Cagney. Um, I think when when you see him, when I start at the very beginning, what surprised me most is what a humanitarian and artist he was. Because you see him in the films and you think he's just like yeah. The way I I describe how I how I because I don't imitate him per se, but you want to gather his essence. And, and he was a real New Yorker, like a real New Yorker, cider, right? Mm -hmm. So you have, how's your New York accent? Uh, I can do New, I do New York half the time now when I'm here. You know, I talk like this all the time. That's not how Cagney talked, but I talk like that. <laughs> well, Cagney talked. It, it gets results. He was kind of a rat-tat-tat guy mm -hmm. and, and taught himself to speak very well, but he always spoke very quickly like this. And what I, um, how I play him is in the, in the, in the movies, if you watch him, he always is kind of forward. And he looks like he'll either kiss you or punch you. Like those, yeah. are, if he's with a woman, he looks like at any moment he might. He's at the ready. He's at the ready. He's just forward movement. And that's how I, if ever I find myself, I don't really have to think about that much now because it's so in me. But mm -hmm. I just think about going forward a little bit and I'm instantly in character. People want to know, oh, if you could ask Cagney oh, one wow. question, what would it be? Can I have a painting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it would be. Do I, can I tell you one small story about of that? Of course. So when we were, um, premiering the show in Florida, Burt Reynolds came to see it. Didn't know he was there, stage manager came back after said, Burt Reynolds is here, he'd like to meet you and the cast, oh, nice. he's in the green room. And I was like, ha yeah, Burt Reynolds is here, that's funny. <laughs> no, really, he's there. He was the nicest man, and he said, I wanna tell you this story about Cagney. He said, when I was a young actor, Cagney did an interview and mentioned my name and said he's one of the up and comers to watch. And oh. so I wanted to thank him. So through a friend of a friend got his phone number called his house, Mrs. Cagney answered. He said, hi, this is Burt Reynolds. I wanted to thank Mr. Cagney for the nice things he said about me. Um, she said, okay, just a minute. Jimmy, Burt Reynolds on the phone. Jimmy comes uh, to the phone. They chat for a minute and Burt Reynolds thanks him and says, would it be okay if I, I'd like to have a picture? Mm -hmm. Long pause on the phone. Cagney's like, sure, sure, I'll send you a picture. Okay, okay. And that's like an of, autograph. An autograph photo, photo yeah. right? Nothing comes, nothing comes. A month later at Burt Reynolds' house, he gets a package and it's a framed painting <laughs> that Cagney had done for him, signed to Burt Reynolds. Amazing. <clears throat> um, Burt gets calls back, gets Mrs. Cagney on the phone, says, Mrs. Cagney, it's Burt Reynolds. Could I talk to Jimmy to thank him? You know, and uh, he hears Mrs. Cagney yell, Jimmy, Jim, 
Burt Reynolds on the phone, and he, in the distance, he hears, "Tell that cheap bastard that he can't have another picture." <laughs> <laughs> so, That's amazing. and then our show was closing the last week. I got a note from Burt Reynolds' assistant. Mr. Reynolds would like you to come out to his house and see the painting, so I got invited over. Oh, that's over. amazing. Yeah, my wife. But really, um, if you were to ask we Cagney a question, what would you want to ask him? Um, uh, I want to ask him. That's it. Wow, I, I love that question, and I wish it's I had tough, thought of it. They're tough interviewers. Um, I would ask him uh, what it was. What it was that made him. Like, he, he really stuck up for the little guy, right? Yeah. Uh, that was, and that's a lot of what our show is about. Where does he think, where did that come from for him? You know, like, what made him, so he was one of the founding members of SAG, and what would he, well, where did that come from for him? That's what I, like, what, why was that such a passion in his life, sticking up for the rights of the little people? He supported a lot of, you know, gave to a lot of causes. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway. People want to know when you first wanted to be an actor or be on Broadway. You've been acting since you were a kid. Yeah, I've been, I've, yeah. I've been, I was always singing and always dancing around, wanted to be a tap dancer. I never started tap dancing until I was 19. That's late I went to two. I went to two classes when I was seven, to dance classes. I was the only boy in the class. I remember it took place in the gymnasium of a local school. And I, after the second class, I said to my mother, I can't go back. I'm scared the guys in the hockey team are going to find out I went to dance class. But I really wanted to go. If I could, there's a question. If I could talk to my younger self, I'd like, screw with the guys in the hockey team thing. <laughs> but then when I got a little older, I was like, I have to tap dance. I was already a good dancer, but I never, I wanted to tap dance. Um, when I was 15, I played the Artful Dodger uh, in a community production. And that's when I said to myself, this is for sure what I want to do with my life. Yeah, That's there was amazing. no option. This was no it. option. And it took me ten years out of acting school to get my first Broadway show, um, and that sort of broke the seal. Now I've done, I've yeah, been lucky to do yeah. several. So um, it was uh, just sort of hung in there, and now I get to do it for a living. It's very exciting. Amazing. Well, thank yeah. you for coming by. Are you kidding? Go I see love Cagney this. at the West Side Theater. You'll see this guy act. You'll yeah, it's fun. Dance. It's very exciting. It's got a, it's got it all. There's a lot of tap dancing. A lot of singing. There's fight scenes. There's movie stuff. There's great original score as well as some Cohan music. Yeah, it's fun. Awesome. Thanks Thank for you. this. Thank you. Yeah, this was really fun. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.